It was the worst day on Wall Street since the crash of 1987. What started in America last year has now spread to every part of the world. Clearly, you're seeing just broad-based declines across all of the major technology sectors. Apple's under pressure. The heightened financial turmoil that we have experienced of late may well lengthen the period of weak economic performance and further increase the risk to growth. In 2008, we saw some of the most devastating collapses in the American economy and around the world. Most economists didn't know it was coming or had no idea how to predict it. In this video, I want to show exactly how you can be prepared and know what signs to look for when the next financial crisis is about to happen. For Australia, we were lucky to have countries like the USA to give us an indication as to what we were going to expect. Australia always seems to trail the American economy simply due to how large the American economy is and it being the dominant currency. So having that advantage gave us and our politicians an insight as to how severe the global financial crisis was going to be. Another advantage was Australia had resources and commodities that countries needed at the time, which helped keep our economy moving along. It can be quite daunting to realize that one decision of buying a home or starting a business could quite literally be taken away from you at the drop of a hat without any warnings, simply due to reasons out of your control. During the 2008 GFC, we see major companies that were thriving, unable to pay wages due to banks collapsing from being over leveraged in home loans. But what if we knew how the economy worked and had signs to give us the warnings? This is what I wanted to find out, which is why I did a lot of research and dig into find out if a global financial crisis is predictable and what are the drivers for such a collapse. I remember watching a YouTube clip of Warren Buffett in 2018 and he talks about the property market and how it had reached prices that were quite high and he thought that things had to either collapse or go down. In 2008, you had uh, something close to a, uh, a bubble in home real estate. 50 million people had mortgages roughly at that time out of 75 million homeowners. When that bubble burst, it hit home to probably 40% of the households in the country, these people that had mortgages on their houses. And fear spread in the month of September 2008 at a rate uh, that was like a tsunami. Land speculation had reached its peak and eventually it came to an end in September of 2008 with the GFC causing banks to collapse and thousands of people who had paid too much and couldn't afford their mortgages to foreclose their homes. This will be a key thing to remember as we learn more about the cycle. It was truly devastating for some, and it was this clip that flicked the light bulb in my head to do more research. This led me on to the Australian Phil Anderson and his YouTube clip 10 years ago, not long after the GFC. And there were things that he talked about which made me really excited. He talked about how financial downturns are predictable and that these downturns happen in cycles. The global economic downturn was caused actually by the US real estate market um, collapsing. And uh, as I report in the book, there is a history of that having happened. And if you trace US history back to when the US federal government first started allowing its citizens to purchase the land back to 1800, you can see when you do the history, there's a very clear 18 year cycle of US real estate turning downwards in that succession. So if you trace the history, you've got 1818, 1836, 1854, 1873, 1893, 1908, 1926, and then you had the Second World War intervene, but after that, US land price load in 1955. And since then, it has been exactly 18 year um, cyclical rhythm 
We had a top with uh, US Real Estate Trusts in 1969, 14 years up. Uh, then we had four down as part of the 18 year sequence into 1973. We had another 14 years up into 1986, 87, four years down into 1991. And we've just had another sequence of 18 years, 14 years up for, and we will get another four years down from when US real estate topped out in 2005, 2006, and real estate's gonna bottom in 2010 in the US. A lot of economists and so-called experts said that they couldn't foresee this global economic downturn occurring. It did come as a surprise and something of a generational, once in a generation occurrence. You say that's not the case. The interesting thing about the research and the history I've done is that every, clearly every cycle doesn't happen the same way. Otherwise, if it did, we'd all see it and we'd all act out and it wouldn't come to, wouldn't come to fruition. So every cycle is different. But what I noticed in, in my historical studies and I detailed in the book, there always seems to be something that comes along about 13 or 14 years in from the bottom that catches everybody by surprise. The thing is though, it's always finance related and it's where banks have been creating their credit based upon the rental value of the land. The, credit, the, the creation of the credit gets right out of hand. Then, for some reason, whatever it is, we get the turn. The amount of credit that the bank created on the land value, the, the land value starts to decline below the levels of the loans outstanding, and that puts enormous pressure on the banks. This has been happening in a regular fashion since 1800 in the United States. This then led me on to his book, The Secret Life of Real Estate and Banking, which outlines, which outlines periodically how these cycles come and go, along with corruption and greed. Phil talks about the 18.6 year cycle, which is centered around the banking system and real estate, along with lots of contributing factors. But it's the way that governments create an environment where construction booms, banks can lend money very easily, and people's behavior in buying and speculating on land become delusional. So let's take a look at the 18.6 year cycle in depth and figure out what the 18.6 year cycle looks like, where we are in the cycle, and how we can best prepare for what's to come. The duration of the cycle is roughly 18.6 years, give or take a year, with 14 years up and four years down. And roughly in the middle of those 14 years is a mid-cycle slowdown or mini recession. The cycle can be broken down into four key areas. Seven years of growth. This is where we come off the back of the last collapse and the economy starts to recover. Interest rates on home loans slowly go down, which makes people feel like they can buy a house. So consumer spending starts to rise again and banks start to issue a lot more credit, which in turn creates the first growth phase of the cycle a mid-cycle slowdown or small recession. The mid-cycle slowdown can be caused by many unpredictable factors. As we've seen in 2019, it was the pandemic that caused this mid-cycle slowdown. But Phil states that we were heading for a mid-cycle slowdown anyways. As we've seen the yield curve start to invert, which is a sign that a recession was on its way despite the pandemic creating the slowdown. A similar event happened exactly 100 years ago with the Spanish flu in 1919 to 1921. But generally this will happen around the seven year mark. This slowdown is fairly short and sharp and the next phase of the cycle kicks in with another seven years of growth. This phase of the cycle is where property prices soar into new heights. Generally, we see commodity stocks like oil and coal do really well, but in this cycle, it looks like greener, more climate-friendly commodities will rise in growth. And banks will also show considerable growth due to lending and the amount of loans they will hand out. But don't let this fool you because most of the time this is where people are fooled by buying property that are 
just way too overvalued. Phil talks about the last two years of this phase of the cycle before the collapse being what's called as the winner's curse. This is where banks become overly confident and people get greedy and they buy overpriced houses and become way too leveraged in their mortgage. A key thing to remember in this last phase of the cycle is to not be over leveraged and be cash heavy for what's to come. Four years of recession or depression. Towards the end of the cycle comes the big crash in the banking and property sectors caused by things we cannot predict but it generally creates a bit of a hysteria with people's behavior. People lose their jobs because businesses can't access funds from banks. The banking system collapses due to people being over leveraged and unable to pay their loans. Stock prices fall due to people being fearful and we see a major downturn in the economy. So where are we in the cycle? As you can see here, I've highlighted where we are in the cycle. We are well on our way in the next growth phase, even though the news is negative and saying that property prices are going down. But in reality, property prices are growing and interest rates will eventually go down as inflation starts to slow down, which will really kick off the property market and banking sector coming into the last two years of the cycle or the winner's curse part of the cycle. Predictions of this boom of the cycle is that it will be larger than ever before, followed by an even more devastating bust. So how can we best prepare for what's to come? First and foremost, what all the experts on this cycle talk about is to not be over leveraged on your home loan and investment loan. Because we don't know the extent of how bad the downturn will be and how many people will lose their jobs. So by having a mortgage that is manageable will be very beneficial. And what will also be super important is to make sure that you have cash buffers set in place so that if you do lose your job, you have that cash set aside allowing you to keep up with your mortgage and all your bills. Another way to be prepared is to keep learning about this cycle. Do your research so you fully understand how this works. Well, I hope this video has given you some insight and help. If it has, drop a like and subscribe and I will catch you on the next one. Peace.